Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do something different than normal. So if you're not interested in hearing how I learn the hard way around the homestead and at home, then you might not watch this video. But if you would like to save yourself the trouble of learning things the hard way, this video is for you. I am going to take you along with me today as I do a few chores, then I'm going to make a drink and sit down and chat with you about all the different lessons I have learned at home and around the homestead with animals, and I've learned them the hard way. And I'm sharing these with you so that hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did and things will go a lot smoother for you. Well, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just gonna casually share with you a few lessons that I have learned being a mom and having a little homestead over the years. I am 46 years old and I have six kids, three of which are out of the house. So I have learned a few things along the way, the hard way. And so I'm gonna share those with you. Number one is, don't compare yourself to others. People show the best sides of themselves, of their home, of their family, usually. They don't show you the mess. And so I know I do that and I do it because I'm teaching a skill, but that's not always the way it is. And for example, I'll show you my kitchen. My kitchen is clean at the moment. But what you're not seeing is my dining room and my living room and the rest of my house, which is pretty much a mess. The next thing I want to share with you is laundry. Teach your kids how to do laundry. But more importantly, and what I learned the hard way is it's better to teach them to fold and put away their laundry. It's a lot easier to throw a batch in the washer or dryer than it is to fold and put away laundry. Okay, I'm gonna let's switch over to homesteading now. We we live on a 10 acre homestead, farm, whatever you want to call it. My kids laugh at me when I call it a farm. But we have 10 acres. Eight of those acres are in alfalfa. So while my water is heating up for my tea, we have had so many animals on over the years on our homestead. The first animals we got were chickens. And so I, I have learned a lot of lessons with chickens. 2020, I think I got about 100 chickens at this house and they were doing great until we went on vacation. These chickens were not, they had a chicken coop that was closed up that they would go in at night, but in the daytime we let them free range on the alfalfa while we were building our house. And when we went on vacation, we had a sweet boy let them out and back in at night. And while we were gone, there must have been several foxes or coyotes, I'm not sure which one, came and they decimated the entire flock. Ate every single one of them, carried them off. The poor boy came back to a massacre. So lesson number one with chickens is make sure that they are safe and in a fenced in area where predators like dogs and fox and coyote and even hawks can't get them. So protect your chickens and make sure that when you get them, in fact, when you get any animal, you have a setup already for them in place. The second animals that we ever had on our homestead, which was a few homesteads ago, so a few houses ago, were milking goats. They were beautiful and I loved milking them. I loved the milk, I loved making kefir and cheese, but we did not start out right. We did not have their fencing up and ready with a gate and everything to hold our goats in. So we had a makeshift gate with a bungee cord. So one day my kids went out to help milk the goats and my son went to shut the gate with the bungee cord and the bungee cord didn't, didn't latch all the way and it, it pulled off the wire and hit my son in the temple and gave him a horrible concussion that he had to actually, he actually had bleeding on his brain from that. It was horrible and <laughs> the worst experience of my life. So an important lesson, always have your fencing and gate set up right before you ever get 
animals. Another lesson we learned uh, recently with our chickens is we had a rooster. We bought a straight run of chicks and got one rooster. Our rooster was aggressive and he ended up plucking out the feathers of two of my hen's backs to the point where they were bleeding. Then he started being aggressive towards my five-year-old son. So, um, you know, once they start being aggressive towards your kids, it's time for them to go and so my daughter and I dispatched him and we had chicken enchiladas. And what I learned the hard way from that experience is that Americana roosters are, at least ours was not very friendly and I would not recommend having one around your home or your kids. Um, the second lesson I learned the hard way from that experience is watch a YouTube video on how to butcher roosters or chickens before you do. Otherwise, you can make a big mess. It's really not, not actually very easy. I'm gonna pour myself a cup of tea and then let's talk about rabbits. We just got rabbits, meat rabbits, for the first time this year. My sweet husband knew that I wanted them and he did not want them because he did not want to butcher them but he knew i wanted them so he bought them for my anniversary slash valentine's day slash birthday he surprised me with nine rabbits two female breeders a buck and six bunnies that the previous owner did not want to butcher so she sold them on craigslist So I was so excited. My youngest is five years old and I don't really get to cuddle him anymore. I don't have any babies to cuddle. So I was super excited when my husband surprised me with these meat rabbits and immediately enjoyed holding them and petting them and snuggling them. But the thing I learned the hard way about rabbits, I, I learned a few things the hard way about meat rabbits. One. When the bunnies get to be about two months old or eight weeks old, they start getting very curious. And if you don't have a really good cage for them to, that they can't get out of, they will escape. So my husband made a nice cage where it was like a free range cage where they could be on the grass and eat the grass and then had a little place to go at night in there where they were covered up. But there was a hole on the top for us to reach in and grab the rabbits out of and a net around it that it was metal covered in rubber and so they actually learned how to climb out and those bunnies got out at least five times and we spent hours hours getting our rabbits back into the cage so lesson number two is when it they when the bar, when the bunnies started getting out all the time, I realized it was time to butcher these bunnies because they were just getting out of hand. <laughs> the problem is chickens are ugly and so it's not hard to kill them, but bunnies are cute and cuddly. And it's a lot harder to dispatch them. 
So with the meat rabbits, we were a little wiser than we were with our rooster and we did prepare ourselves. We did watch several videos on how to dispatch meat rabbits. And so um, the process actually went a lot smoother with the meat rabbits, but it was hard because they are so sweet and so cute and cuddly. So if you have a hard, if you would have a hard time butchering an animal that is cute and cuddly, meat rabbits are probably not the thing for you. But there are a lot of benefits to meat rabbits. Number one, they have a lot more meat on them than a chicken does. Number two, meat rabbits are all white meat, just like chicken breast, the whole thing, and less fat. So less fat, all white meat, more white meat. In fact, one rabbit fed our family three meals. Chicken taco soup, rabbit taco soup, uh, chicken enchiladas, rabbit enchiladas, and then we just smoked a rabbit. That was great. But what I did learn the hard way with the first rabbit is the first rabbit we butchered, we immediately took it in the house, cleaned it up, I do not believe we marinated it in buttermilk, but we seasoned it and fried it in butter. It tasted delicious, but it was tough. So what we learned the hard way is you have to let meat that you've butchered rest in the refrigerator for about three days to let it become tender. Another lesson we learned the hard way with our meat rabbits is that they they only take, and we knew this, they only take about 30 days to for their gestation period. So once they've bred, they will have babies in about 30 days, which is very fast. But you have to have that pregnant doe ready and set up at least a week before so that she can make her nest and have her private place to have her babies which we did not keep a calendar and write down the day that she was bred. So we knew she was due anytime soon. We felt her belly that it had dropped, but I did not have her own cage set up with her with hay and, not hay, straw, ready for her to make her nest. And so one morning we went out there to check their food and water and the two mama bunnies had this orangish stuff on their white fur and we were thinking, that's weird, did they get out or you know, what? what is this? I think her water had actually broken while she was in the cage with the other bunnies, but bunnies will not give birth. Bunnies give birth in private only. <laughs> and so we got, she was acting funny. She was, she had this yellow stuff on her and it wasn't on her lower parts, it was like on her forehead. And she also, um, she was acting kind of frantic and making noises, which bunnies do not make noises unless they're being chased by a dog or something where they're scared for their life. They just don't make noises. So she was making all these noises and kind of acting frantic. So I said, let's get her cage, put some straw in there. And as soon as we put her in this new cage with straw, she immediately started pulling out her own fur and building a nest. And when we realized what was going on, which only took a couple of minutes, we took that cage, put it underneath the back porch and walked away came back about five or 10 minutes later from feeding all the other animals and she had already given birth to her six baby rabbits and they were all clean and dry. And so I think her water had actually broken and she was in the process of having babies and maybe holding them in until she had a nest made for her to put her babies in. So definitely if you're breeding your rabbits, make sure you write down on a calendar the day that they were bred so you know exactly when they are going to deliver and you are ready a week before at least with their own cage and own nesting box where they can raise their little sweet bunnies. Okay, on to the next animals. We have covered goats, we have covered chickens, we have covered meat rabbits. The next animal I wanna to talk to you about that we learned things the hard way with was pigs. We did pigs about 10 years ago. We actually, my sons did the pigs. They took care of it, they did everything. They raised them. 
It costs a lot of money to feed pigs. It is much cheaper to buy pork when it goes on sale at the grocery store than it is to raise your own pigs if you're buying the food through DMV Supply, Tractor Supply, places like that. Those places, pig food costs about $20 a bag and usually you raise at least two pigs together because they get lonely and they will go through one bag a week when they are little. When they're older, they're going through a bag every couple days. So it's a lot cheaper to buy your pork from the grocery store, but if you're like us, you want the experience of raising your own pigs, raising your own meat, then go to a granary that sells feed. It is a lot cheaper than buying it from DNB or Tractor Supply or a commercial brand store. Another thing that we learned about pigs the hard way is take your pig to a butcher. <laughs> My husband is a hunter. He has been butchering animals like elk and deer since he was about 12 years old, maybe even younger because his dad was a hunter. So naturally my husband decided he would butcher our pigs and it was no problem to dispatch them. But when it comes to removing the hair and skin of a pig, they're different than other animals. Most animals like rabbits, even chickens, deer, elk, their skin is not really attached to the other tissues in their body, like the muscles. There is a space between it, but with pigs, their skin is connected to everything. So he had to use a knife and physically remove every inch of the pig's skin himself. <laughs> I think butchers actually just burn off or scald off the hair or outer skin of the pig but we didn't have the equipment to do that. And so it took my husband a very long time to get that pig butchered and the outer skin removed. So this time we have two pigs. My daughter is raising one of them for a 4-H project and the other one we will butcher ourselves. But we will be taking that pig to the local butcher here, which is Boston's Beef House in Ontario, and let them do that for us. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it gave you some insights to learn from so that you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and we'll see you next time.